Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, I wanted to share with you uh, the work I've been doing for this Ancient Civilizations Lost and Found Game Environment Challenge. So this is being hosted by ArtStation, and a fantastic site, by the way. Uh, they've not paid me to say anything about their site, just I'm a fan. Uh, and it's really good for artists to get your work known, to get it out there and get people to see it. They provide some amazing tools for creating a portfolio, so I'm going to be doing all of that. And uh, a friend of mine, you know, forwarded this to me and said, you, you might be interested in this, and I absolutely am. So this is a really cool challenge, and the idea here is that we are creating some sort of an ancient civilization or some ancient artifact or something that has been, well, lost and then found. So I wanted to walk through with you guys today uh, each stage of the development of this entry that I'm working on. And there's a lot of lessons learned here. And for maybe some of the new people getting into 3D, um, this will be some really good uh, information for some of us old pros. Okay, well, you know, this will be kind of a refresher, but you get to see the thought process. And please, if you're either new or if you are a professional and you have questions, comments, improvements I can make please I'm I'm a sponge I want to you know get all that knowledge in so as you can see here we got about two weeks left so I'm gonna be crunching hard on this but let's get into it so here you can read through the brief and uh, I'll provide the links in the description so you can go through and read all this yourself but um, the concept here is that we're creating an environment it has to be a real-time engine environment and so my environment is being built in UE4 and the general brief is that we are creating, you know, this ancient civilization, something that has been, you know, buried or, you know, lost, and then it is now newly found by by uh, another civilization. So my concept was to have this um, sort of an artifact that is a room that is a, like a giant clock that is actually uh, counting down the uh, sort of like mankind's doomsday clock and it would count down to the final days of man and it's discovered by these astronauts later on. So to begin with we had lots of sketching and I'll put up here in the video uh, a couple of these sketches that we have here and I will reference them over here for myself. So it all began with this image here and it's just a quick little doodle on my whiteboard as you can see it's very 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 rough. Uh, just I had this idea of a central area with uh, these expanding rings and then these three uh, sort of uh, glyph walls and the whole thing would be this clockwork mechanism to where these rings are rotating along the ground and throughout the environment as you'll see in just a short bit and there's this final sort of pointer that is going along the back wall that is counting down from the, uh, the birth through the rise through the fall of man or it could be any civilization really, but I'm sort of going for the fall of man. So um, after that, we went through a lot of sketching. Now this picture here is uh, very early on. I actually filled this page and about two others. I'll see if I can get this scan and put in there for you. But uh, just really sketching out the center, center area for this thing. I wanted to have this really cool rotating ring that goes in a different direction and have a nice weird holographic display of the earth or of whatever planet this is and some stars and things and the idea is that beginning at the center and working your way outward these rings calculate the day week month year season and then it calculates out to eons and shows you know how this progression is going of this civilization so then um, that is for all of the concept art and I wanted to make sure that this was uh, had a lot of uh, interconnected gear mechanics and so I've been researching a lot of uh, gears and we'll get into that in just a little bit but the um, I wanted to make sure that it's plausible but also you know it's still a fun environment and uh, the idea also is to have this built by one race and then another race has clearly come along and enhanced it and then it's discovered by a third race or discovered by man or somebody and I wanted to make sure that I told this whole narrative in a single frame if possible. You know, if you just have a single picture of this environment, just a really impressive, you know, desktop background kind of image, could we tell this whole environment from one thing and see what's going on? So the next step was to go to uh, what's called a mood board. And uh, as you can see here with this image, this is my mood board. And this is just a collection of half references 
I'm not um, not going to use any of these exactly by any means. It's just a matter of getting the idea down, the general idea, the feeling, or well, mood. And this is very similar to uh, a lot of children, or maybe when you were younger, your parents or uh, some sort of a mentor uh, helped you to create a, a goal or a dream board. This is the same kind of idea. It's just a single image where back in the day people used to cut out of news, uh, newspapers or um, magazines and you just glue them all over this board. And the idea is that you look at this thing and it, you, your brain you know, sucks in all the different concepts on here. So you're just getting the idea. And here I've got the actual rings themselves and the actual environment is going to be crossed between this ancient stone and some marble. It's sort of like a palace, but it's intricate with um, the fact that we have gear, inner workings, like a clock. So I wanted to kind of mesh all of these ideas. So the best way is to kind of get all of these together in one image so I can look at it all at once. And then your brain is able to make these connections, these decisions, and these uh, these meshes a lot easier by seeing it all at once. So that's our mood board there. And this also, it helps us to gather everything from design ideas to color ideas and even lighting references. So if you want a certain mood, that also uh, deals with lighting. And you can have things like, where are your lights to draw focus? And where do you want the lights to kind of fade off and add mystery? So those are some things that you take into account as well with all of that. So next, now we're going to move over to our blockout phase. And here you can see a very early blockout. And this was just to kind of get general shapes down. The idea of a blockout is it's very basic shapes. You're not doing any modeling yet. I know people want to jump in and make cool stuff. And we will do that. But any building needs a solid foundation. So these are very basic shapes. These are general forms, just the, the overall volume. And you're getting the areas knocked out. You'd be surprised if you look at the blockouts for some of your favorite AAA titles that you've played on your home consoles. The blockouts are incredibly low resolution, just literally cubes and cylinders and that sort of thing. And it's just to get the overall dimensions correct. The blockout really helps us to make sure that things uh, physically fit, to make sure that they aesthetically fit. You know, you can very quickly, for me, I'm making these rings. I could put a ring in there and rotate it at a certain angle and go, no, nah, I hate that. Or I had this experience with my personal portfolio project. I'm using a blockout phase right now, and I had an idea for my ceiling, and I tried it. In my head, it sounded great. Once I saw it and I walked through it, absolutely despise it. So that really helped me go, okay, I know what I don't want, so let's just move that out and let's focus on what I do want. So here we're just using uh, primarily primitives and just getting the overall form and feel to the shape of the room, of the environment. This is also a great time to play with scale. So I think you can see in this image there's a tiny box there on the left, uh, left of center and that was my human scale reference. And then I wanted to make these giant pillars and all kinds of things around it. So now I have the ability to play with these things. I can quickly move them. I haven't spent a lot of time modeling something, unwrapping it, painting it, baking the lighting to go, oh, this is terrible. You know, I want to make sure that, okay, let me move this and go, yeah, that feels right. And for this environment, I spent a lot of time jumping into the, the first person experience and then saying, let's walk around and look at it, make sure that I got that. So these are, yes, a good reference here is that very few, if any, actual models. Sometimes if you have an actual model that you have to incorporate, you can import that and use that as a reference. But, you know, very few actual models built in here. And UE4 in particular makes this extremely easy with the ability to do the additive and subtractive volumes. So for the center of my room, I actually have this dome cut out to the floor because I'm going to have a giant spherical dis uh, holographic display. And because of that, I was able to just make a box, make a sphere, make two spheres actually. The one I used as a cutout volume for the floor to cut out that curved nature to the floor. And the second sphere I used as a, you know, just a sphere and colored it to stand in for my holographic display. And it makes it super easy to create these things. So that's a really powerful tool. And if you do have any materials for your block out phase, what you can see here, I don't really have any materials in here, just a solid gray material that's throwing things around. Uh, that's good for playing with lighting as well. You can block out your lighting. Don't spend a lot of time making it perfect right now. 
But if you have any materials, make sure they are very few. They're mostly solid colors. Just things to break up, like what's a wall, what's a floor, that kind of thing. Really not a lot of uh, detail needed here in any respect, especially for materials. Okay, so let's move over to the actual modeling. And I believe here I can bring up the environment here. Okay, so switching back here. So here's the actual modeling so far. So like any good budget, what you want to do is save where you can and spend where you must, okay? So for me, I had a lot, a lot of gear work going on here. And you may notice that um, the gears themselves uh, have more detail to them than the actual teeth do. And the teeth are not connected. They're actually just uh, intersected slightly. But with the proper painting and everything, you really won't be able to tell. And this allows me to make sure that I use as few polygons as necessary to get the shape. But then I can then reduce further. Like this scene here, this is still kind of halfway between block out and uh, final uh, low poly, especially like my, my pillars here. Uh, my pillars here definitely need to be reduced. I just threw some cylinders in there and was just playing with the shape. But for here, you can see uh, this outer ring here. You know, this can probably be reduced a little bit. Like I don't need that center line really. But these guys are pretty much as low poly as you can get them, and they are just intersected. So here we're definitely taking account into budget. And uh, another thing you need to take into account is uh, use modularity where you can, especially for an environment. Environments are large, so we want to make sure that we are as modular as possible. So for, for example, uh, each of these pillars is going to be unique, but the shape of them is not. And for the rings, you know, each ring is the same sort of calculation. And then some of these rings are actually, uh, well, this outer ring is different, but this inner ring here, I was able to make like one fourth of it and then copy, 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 that sort of thing. So make sure you use that where you can. And modularity really plays in a, into effect here with my uh, astronauts. So we're gonna talk about them. Uh, these guys were designed to be tweaked. So I have my initial astronaut here. And then what I've done with him is I've made two variants here very, very quickly by just tweaking the initial shape. So uh, one example is the arm. If I go to my polygon select, let's do this. And let's uh, select everything involved in the arm. So for example, I can rotate his arm very easily because it's actually not connected. And then I could quickly say, oh, I need him to, you know, raise his arm up. So let's put his arm back in place here. It's a quick and dirty example, but, you know, the model has been designed to have different parts moved around, tweaked and adjusted. So as you can see here, I've been able to do this similar effect uh, over here with this gentleman. I was able to raise his arm. I was able to rotate his head a little bit. And then I was able to rotate his hand at the end here, rotate it on that, on that glove, since the, they've been built to do that. And then this guy here, I was able to rotate his arm as far as the vertices around this way, and then rotate his hand around. He's going to be projecting a holographic map, and he's, he's checking the map. He's looking at the map going, hmm, are we in the right place? And then we have this guy is actually uh, about to touch the sphere which is probably a bad idea. And then we have uh, just a regular dude in the back standing there in awe. So this was our original guy here. So these guys were all built off of one guy and then because he was properly planned, I was able to actually tweak and adjust and move and I got a lot more variety out of one base set of work. So that's definitely good. And then because they are all based on the same guy. If I look at his uh, UVs, for example. Oh, this guy's not the one that has UVs. I think it's this guy. Yeah. So look at his UVs. He's all UV'd, and this is the same UV set for this guy and for this guy. So I paint one, I paint them all. And then what I'm gonna add is, I'm gonna still have to add some stuff around their waist here, like they're gonna have some packs and like a little breathing tube that connects to here. And then on the back, in the paint, there is an area right here for like a nameplate. So if I add those things as separate objects, then I get the individuality of these astronauts while still maintaining a paint one, you paint them all kind of thing. 
Okay, so also talking about our modeling here, let's talk about the gears. So the gears, um, I've done a lot of studying about gears. I'm still not there yet, but I think I understand uh, good uh, mechanics to it. And obviously these are, these are incomplete. Obviously, you know, this would work, but then I need teeth here to move this wheel, you know, so still working it out. But the idea is the center of this circle is the day. And then you'll notice that this ring has seven sections. So that's like a week. And then to slow down the uh, torque, I think is the term, probably not, uh, to slow down the rate of spin, I need this gear here. And this gear is exactly one seventh this diameter. So this ring should move at one seventh the rate of this, which is for this ring, is the month ring. So this is a week, seven days, seven segment segments. The center of this is one day. So one day, one week, four sections, one month. Each month ticks away a little bit at a time at these pillars, which are the seasons. So each pillar has some decorations and some lights and things, and as they rotate, they will affect the environment. And then we go out to this ring segment here, it should have 12 sections and that's a year. So that year slowly ticks along. And this ring is for our lunar cycles. And so there are four distinct shapes here. You can see there's different sized cutouts. I think these two are identical, but this one and this one are unique. And then this ring will have to have its own teeth added, obviously, to tick this along. Now, the part that I did a lot of research, I wanted to have this be between 60 40 kind of ratio of fantasy to realism I actually want it to be a fantastical environment where you look at this and go oh wow this is this cool idea etc but I wanted to make sure it was grounded in reality uh, just to the point that it the goal is to make it plausible without your brain saying no this is this is nonsense it, your brain just stops believing it so try to find that middle ground I've learned a lot about gears and I actually have a big shout out, a uh, thank you to one of my coworkers, Al, if you, if you watch this, a big thank you to you for all of his help with um, learning about gears. He is, a, he is a mechanical engineer kind of guy, so he knows a lot about this. And he helped me actually figure out how to do this part of the ring, this outer ring. I wanted it to be, the lunar ring, I wanted it to be angled. So this is a 15 degree grade. And then the teeth actually have to be angles. So if you look at them, the teeth are kind of askew because when they reach this point where they are perfectly perpendicular to the rest of it, they become straightened. And then that will allow this uh, yearly ring here to tick them along. So otherwise it would not work. So, and it still might, might not, but I'm playing with it and I, I think it's correct. So I've been, you know, asking him for advice and the environment is looking great because of his help. So thank you. And uh, a lot of these gears, they should be all functional. Uh, as far as the rotation and the, the number of teeth and that sort of thing uh, with the exception that we have these forces are implied so that's what we have for that and now let's move over to talk about some of the painting that has been done on the astronauts all right so here we are with our astronauts in the uh, substance painter and just wanted to show you what we've got going on here so the goal here was to have that 70-30, maybe more like 60-40 uh, information to eye resting kind of thing. You don't want to have detail just everywhere. You want to make sure that there's a chance for your eye to rest and for it to naturally move across the, the model surface. And the goal was also to make these unmistakably astronauts without being totally realistic and therefore kind of boring. You know, this is a fantastic environment probably experienced later in the universe's history. So we want to make sure that this is, um, it harkens back to, and I think it definitely looks enough like an astronaut without being uh, totally realistic. And I've also added a lot more detail around the face to draw attention to this, uh, this cool, I like the cyclopean sort of eye we got going on here. You know, it's like mechanics built into this glass. And then we've got, of course, the little camera. There we got the camera and we got some, uh, you know, some details around it and then this little breathing apparatus or what have you here and then a little bit of a you know antenna thing here to communicate lots of uh, screws to hold the whole thing together I might still add some more to this uh, some panel seams and that sort of thing and then of course you know 
instead of USA, we've got you know Art Station logo there. So yeah, this is definitely um, I think this is successful uh, at least for for the time being. I might come back and uh, do some more with it, but I wanted to make sure that I uh, I combine this with um, the proper amount of details to draw your eye in different areas, and then combining with the poses, the fact that we have you know this camera and we have the uh, the central eye, it definitely lends to where are they looking, so that helps with our posing. And uh, here's that area I talked about earlier for the the nameplate. So you have the nameplate there for the name of the astronaut, that kind of thing, sort of like they do for jerseys for sports uh, sports players. You, know, you have the uh, name on the back so you know who it is. So that's what we got for the paint going on here. And it's pretty simple as far as uh, breaking things down by section and making sure that uh, everything makes sense. So I've got visor, helmet, collar, camera, body, cloth, which is the arms and legs. Uh, the backpack is all one section. The canister is this thing across his chest. The body pelvis is this area, which again, still gonna have like some, some packs, or maybe some tools or that sort of thing. So that's why it looks a little blank here. Uh, and then we've got the shoes themselves. And then I've got a section for screws and dirt, of course. So a lot of that you can see in here, we got all the screws everywhere. And then a light smattering of dirt over everything. So looks pretty good. I'm very happy with it. I wanted to get the astronauts knocked out early on because I knew I wanted them for the narrative of the scene. But I know that it's also the kind of thing that it's going to take a while. They're intricate, lots of little details but I think it's really paid off. If we go jump over to the scene now, we'll take a look at what we've got going on here. And I'll give you a little fly around. Let's go ahead and go jump into immersive mode here. So here's the, fine, uh, the, the current state of the scene, not by any means final, uh, the current state of the scene. So we have our little narrative of our group of explorers here. I originally only had three and I felt like maybe just a few more. So I might go do four, I might get rid of one of these guys. But here's our guy here who is um, about to touch the sphere, which is may or may not be a good idea. He might get some knowledge, he might get zapped, who knows. Um, but I really like the, um, the lenses, they, they reflect the environment quite well. And as you can see here, he's lifting his arm. And then we have this guy over here who's got the map. You can see here's the map in progress. So we got uh, one of those holographic maps where the, uh, the rooms are all one color and then the interior rooms and doors and hallways are a different color. It's coming along quite nicely and I've got this um, holographic beam thing going on. And as you can see, he's looking down at it, you know, kind of turning his head as much as probably the helmet will allow, and then looking down at the map. And uh, yeah, he's probably looking about through here, but you know, the helmet only turns so far. I could change that a little bit. And uh, yeah, everybody's everybody's just kind of checking out the room here, and we have our gears in place, and our large gear here on the outside edge. And this room is probably only about half full and half wide, so you're going to go all the way to the wall here, and maybe a little bit further still. And from back here, the room looks really lit up because of the nature of the lighting. Lighting is still very work in progress, obviously. This is just a quick block out. You can see the uh, the glyph walls are still just boxes. So we're kind of working from the center outward, making sure that everything is functional, making sure that everything aesthetically works, and making sure that all of our, uh, all of our gears are going to function, and that everything is following the narrative and, and it, if it does not enhance the environment, then it's removed. If you don't want to have anything that isn't helping us. So that's all I have for you guys this week. I really hope you have enjoyed. I hope this helped some people who are getting into this sort of industry or if you had questions or uh, wanted to know more about what I've been doing and how it works. I'm going to try and do a few more of these update videos to make sure that I can show off as much of the process as I can. And so in between those videos, of course, I'll be crunching, crunching, trying to get this done. Uh, this is an exciting challenge. I'm really excited for it. I think that it's a, it's a lot of fun and I just kind of let my brain go wild and figure out what I wanted to do. And I'm really excited for where this is going. I really hope for next time that we'll be at the point where we've got more of the room laid out, some more stuff. We'll go back to you know our favorites with substance designer, substance painter, figuring out the different materials. I'm gonna get out the rest of the room mechanics and make everything, you know, it actually I have uh, rotators on most of this, so it actually does move when you play the, the level. So uh, I'm really excited for that. Can't wait. So I'm going to stop talking now and get back to it. So as always, guys, I hope you have enjoyed very much. If you have any comments, questions, anything, please let me know. I've been really excited for all the engagement we've had going. We're up to over 600 subs, and I'm, I'm just so excited about that. That means you guys are 
excited for it as I am, and it really drives me forward. So thank you so much for that. And as always, uh, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.